Hello everybody and welcome back to the deck guide. This one is going to be an interesting one. Um, this deck is probably the most broken deck of this expansion. Um, I would be quite surprised if it didn't get hotfixed. That is kind of how I would uh, how insane I think it is. Um, the, I played this deck today and I probably queued against like 80% mirrors. Like... It was pretty insane. So I think this deck is very strong. Um, it's really, really good at just, you know, spewing out points. Like it has an insane amount of points. Your bronzes are so good. Your golds are so good. There's just no bad cards in this deck. Everything is really, really strong. And yeah, it's, I would, like I said, disclaimer, this deck is probably going to get hotfixed soon. I would be very surprised if it weren't. Um, but yeah, let's get into deck and card, card by card and see what everything does. And then we'll jump into a few games and see how we do. Um, so we've got second win, play a skeleton from your graveyard. And this leader ability is just getting better and better as more and more good golds are being printed for Skelliger. This leader ability is becoming stronger and stronger as time goes on. Um, and there are some pretty good targets you can take with this. So yeah, pretty strong leader ability. Um, we have Hemdom, deal one damage to random enemy units on a row multiplied by the number of units on that row. So in other words, if your opponent has five units in a row, it'll do five um, instances of one damage. If it's four, it'll do four. If it's six, it'll do six, so on and so forth. Um, so the more units on an opponent's row, the more damage this Hemdom will do. And it is a warrior, and most cards in this deck are warrior cards. And that's very, very important. You'll see why um, in a bit. Next up, we have his Herald on Crate, and this is one of the new evolving cards. This one is extremely strong. One of, if not the strongest evolving card right now. Um, play a Bronze Warrior from your graveyard and damage it by two. Um, okay, well, I guess this is the... Forget about the first section. You're probably not going to play the first one. You want to play this in round three in 90% of the time. Um, Herald the Cripple in round three. Um, it's play a Bronze Warrior from your graveyard. Whenever a Warrior... Um, whenever you play a Warrior, damage a random enemy unit by one, ignoring its armor. So this card is basically an engine that your opponent cannot kill. And the reason why your opponent cannot kill it is if they kill it, your leader ability can resurrect it again and you can play it a second time. So your opponent's basically not allowed to kill this card because if they do, you can replay it. And resurrecting a Bronze Warrior is insane value because these bronzes are nuts. And it's just great value with Herald the Cripple. And the fact that it's an engine in its own right is insane. Um, next up, we've got Tirgvi. 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 I'm not sure how you pronounce this card. But this is an interesting one. It is a veteran. In other words, if every round that is progressed, this card strengthens itself by one. So in round one, it's five points. In round two, it's six points. In round three, it's seven points. Um, give an enemy unit Rupture. What Rupture does, the status that you apply to your opponent's card. Be careful. You cannot give Rupture to a card with Veil. So you can't Rupture things that have Veil on them. But other than that, you can give something Rupture. And if your opponent doesn't answer it, which they're pretty much going to need a Purify, then what this card basically does is damage that unit by its own strength. So for the most part, it basically reads... Purify me or, you're, or you die. So if your opponent can't purify the status, then this card essentially is going to kill most things that it puts Rupture on. Um, it's a very interesting card. Well, it's a very strong card. It's also especially strong in round one, especially when you get Red Coin, because you can keep it as a form of reach. If your opponent ever passes, you can play this card and it'll kill the card. What you, and your opponent will have no way to interact with it because they've already passed. If they pass, you can just play this card, kill their highest units, and win the round. It's an insanely good card for reach. It's really good on red coin. Um, you can use it in round one, and you can use it again with your leader ability in round three, potentially, um, as it is a Skelliger card. So, again, very good card in a lot of situations. Next up, we've got Blood Eagle, and this might be the strongest card of the expansion. This is an insanely good card, <clears throat> especially in this deck. It is Echo, which means you can use it twice. Um, if we use it once, it'll go to your graveyard and then it'll move to the top of your deck. So, like I said, you can use it twice. Think of it like a Royal Decree um, for this deck, basically. Or a Neuromancy, if you want to think of it like that. And damage enemy by two, then play a Warrior from your deck with provision of eight or less cost. And there's a couple of eights and less. Um, that's not even the best part about it. Death Blow, play a Warrior, just any Warrior from your deck instead. And Blood Thirst 3, you can always trigger the Death Blow ability. So in other words, if you have three damage enemy units, then you can you don't have to, you have to worry about the, the Death Blow. And this just lets you find your important cards whenever you want them. Great in round one, great in round three, just a very strong card giving you access to all your um, win conditions, potentially. Then you've got Svalblad Totem. This is good in the mirror because there are a lot of people playing um, random damage in Skelligans. You're going to face a lot of mirrors, so honestly, building your deck to make it better against the mirror will be 
quite beneficial. We'll set Mork Fog, damage a minute by one, repeat until his target <clears throat> is damaged. Um, just a good reset target, can be nice in the mirror as well if your opponent plays a great sword or some kind of tall unit. Can also something not be that great in the mirror. Um, so maybe you could even think of mulliganing it some, in some cases because sometimes your opponent doesn't actually play the great sword in round three, especially if they don't have final say. And you could actually even consider mulliganing with this card. But um, it is a warrior as well, so it's tutorable with your. Um, with your Blood Eagle and also great synergy with the Great Sword, which we'll get to in a bit. Next up, we got Madman Lugos, and this is thing I've been trying out. Um, I think it's very easy to get Bloodthirst with this with this deck, and if this card gets a lot of Bloodthirst, it can kill very, very consistently. Um, damage any unit by twice the number of damage enemy units. So, in other words, um, for every Bloodthirst there is, this card will do two additional damage. So, if your opponent has one damage unit, it'll do two damage your opponent has two it'll do four damage your opponent has three damage units it'll do six damage and so on and so forth and it's pretty easy to get a lot of damage units in this deck um we got skewardel drummond and this card is extremely good with devotion because it gets veteran status and it says damage enemy unit by skewardel's base power so in round one it's going to basically be three power so it'll do three damage which you probably don't want to use in round one in round two it'll be a four strength card because a lot of veteran then it's four deal four and in round three it's a five deal five which is a lot of removal um and really good amount of points for this type of card we also have grimace and this is again a little bit of a mirror tech because a lot of people are playing that turing v right now and you can just basically purify the um status of the rupture so just a nice little mirror tech we also have donut hinder damage enemy by two blood those two damage by four instead also a warrior card we also have herkia i believe it's pronounced and it's going to be just an engine one of these engines that have veil so an order um split three damage randomly between units on a row that you, you can choose what row you want to damage um at the end of your turn if the order was not yet used damage a random enemy by one so it's going to do one damage every turn and then if you want to you can use the order and just do take the three damage and it'll stop doing its random damage um thereafter so really good value the great sword really good value for you say our bloodthirst just a very strong card was a decoction damage a unit by one six times so it's essentially six damages um so just good removal we have a great sword whatever enemy takes damage on the opposite row boosts off by one your opponents are going to take a lot of damage this card can be insanely valuable um in certain situations and can be even a finisher that you can use with leader ability sometimes a drum and berserker this is another new card at the end of your turn damage self and a random enemy by one berserk to transform into bear abomination so basically this card is going to come on the board it's going to do one damage to itself and one damage to enemy unit then it's going to do it again and then it's going to do it a third time and once it get and once it goes down to two strength it's going to transform into a bear, bear abomination so it's going to play in ideal circumstances as a nine for five which is pretty strong as well as setting up some more bloodthirst and some synergy with maybe great swords or whatnot again also a warrior card like pretty much most of our bronzes on crate raider veteran damage enemy by two bloodthirst three gain zeal uh, venture tag so again it's going to strengthen itself every round in round three it's going to be a six point card that does two damage so eight for five um it's pretty good also a card you can use your leader ability on um studying blow deal four damage if the unit has armor deal seven damage instead it's good removal Turisach invader um veil veteran this is going to be uh seven for four in round three that has veil so your opponent can't really poison or anything like that solid card um also a warrior card then we have on crate black so this is a card that's been around for a while but it's really strong now uh, more so than ever this card boosts an ally unit by one charge one gain one charge whenever you play a warrior and this deck pretty much has almost exclusively warriors which means that on crate blacksmith can easily play for seven eight nine ten points if it's left unanswered and that's quite strong for a four provision card um very very strong in this deck and one of the one of those cards that you know has it's been around for a while but it almost feels like it's a new card because it's never really seen play until now um then we got drum and villager another new card give bleeding four to an enemy to the unit to the right and then give bleeding to an enemy unit for four so in that sense the four for four but if you combine this with maybe like something like totem or maybe something of yours is about to die or something that's been poisoned that's about to die or maybe you can use it on a um you can use it onto something like a drone berserker if you give something bleeding of your own that you don't really care about that's about to die or something that you want to berserk then this card basically can in a way just give four bleeding for free and it becomes an eight for four which is pretty nuts um so very strong card not underestimated also another a little bonus tip is if you use it on something of yours that has veil like maybe a turisach invader or your um evolving card it won't even give it any bleeding at all so you can just give your own unit free bleeding and it won't actually take the bleed because it has veil and then you can give bleeding to your opponent's units um just for free making the eight for four very strong on crate warrior um this card is a nice six for 
or, or rather, sorry, a, yeah, yeah, six for four, give an enemy unit bleeding three, if the unit was paid from your graveyard, deal three damage instead, um, so yeah, just a nice six for four, it is a warrior, and also not a bad target for your Harold the Cripple, if you want, um, that three damage to kill something on deploy, potentially, um, but that's a deck, I think it's very, very strong, um, one recommendation I'll make to it is, like I said, if you are playing a lot of mirrors, which I think you will do quite a bit right now, because everyone seems to be playing this deck, um, you could try and make it even more um, orientated to beating the mirror. Maybe run Wild Boar. A little bit risky running Wild, wild Boar of the Sea, because of Wild Boar of the Sea, you don't have a tutor card for it, so you can't actually use Blood Eagle to find it. So Wild Boar of the Sea, although it is a pretty strong card, and I definitely could see it being in this deck, it is a little bit risky, more so than I'm comfortable with. But if you want to, you can definitely run Wild Boar of the Sea. Um, but again, it's going to be a little bit inconsistent in some situations. But that's a deck. Let's jump into a few games and see how we do. Okay, so it seems like we are up against the mirror. Surprise, surprise. We do have the advantage of going um, second, which is nice. But let's see what our mulligan show us. Um, we have this for this, which is kind of nice. Don't think I want to play this in round one. I also don't think I want... Well, I've got two of them. Maybe I just keep it just in case like, this dies, which it might end up doing. Then again, eh, this is also kind of not the greatest thing to have in round one. Okay, so we find the totem. That's nice. Um, unfortunately, we don't have Blood Eagle, which is something you always really want to have in round one. Would give us so much reach with access to 2v, but unfortunately, we don't have it, so no 2v reach on that, but sure. Okay, so he plays a Blacksmith. This card is something that's kind of scary um, in this deck. So I'm going to go ahead and take a stunning blow on that because I don't want that Blacksmith surviving. It can be very, very threatening um, with so many warrior cards. So he plays that, sure. I think I'm gonna go ahead and play this then and then I might soon play this I don't want to play this now because it's gonna die very easy to damage from this maybe the blood eagle so I'm gonna get and play this it's somewhat uninteractive in a way and it's a very good target for me to give Drummond villager bleed to okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do this now and then this is going to transform and lose the bleed anyway, so very good value on that. And then I might just go ahead and decoction the Herkia next turn, potentially. Really want to get this down sooner rather than later, but at this point it's a little bit late. I'm not sure how much value it's actually going to be anymore, but we'll see. Um, definitely do want to decoction that soon, though. Okay, that would probably just end up playing Donut Wall, I guess. Hmm, actually, hmm... Hmm. Oh, okay, so you use all the charges. Interesting. Okay, I do some math here. So we could play this, and then I guess we could do it with him, though, sure. Yeah, I guess we can even go two cards down, something. But well. So, play that, finally get this down. And then we'll see what we start playing after that. Final save is very valuable. Unfortunately, we don't have any other reach cards. No, no Blood Eagle, no Mork Fog. Feels very bad, but we'll try and make the best of what we have and see how we can win round one. Okay, so he plays the Blood Eagle. Unfortunately for me, I don't have a Blood Eagle of my own. He uses two tower bronze card, interesting, I think. Yeah, I guess some Bloodthirst. So now I've got to do some math. So he's taking two points of bleeding. This can play for nine. So if I play this for five, I can play this for ten. Well, it's twelve with two bleeding. So five plus twelve. Um. I think it does it for now. Um, thinking no damage here. Okay. Sure, let's do this for now. And then I guess we'll take it with the handle. It's gonna play for reach, I guess, at this point. 
just play for some reach and then if he passes we can always take in a one hopefully a little bit annoying we didn't find our blood eagle obviously a fantastic card to have here or our tv or our morgue fog really good reach cards but unfortunately we have them so we have to use hemdal as our reach card for now So it plays as a wild ball to see, interesting. Uh, now we're down a lot of points. So I can play this now for 9 points. Um, to play this for 9, it's going to put me at 14. And then I have wild ball, which probably plays for about 12 or 11 points. So I have 9 basically 20 i'm still i'm down too much i'm gonna have to pass here i don't have a choice unfortunately I don't have reach with tugvi or blood eagle so we'll have to pass he gets final say which is not ideal but down by 22 points just gonna need to pass okay so let's see what the mulligan shows not the greatest top decks yet Gonna probably drive past with this in the graveyard for <coughs> my Herald the Cripple. Still missing out on quite a few golds. Hopefully, bless RNG, we can maybe find one or two of them. That'll be nice. Uh, missing out on our Tigri, missing out on our Blood Eagle, Morkvog, Madman Lugos, Herkia, and Grimmistal. Lots of golds. Still want to find for round three. Hopefully, we can find some of them. Okay, that's at least one of them. That's another one. Very good. So we'll go ahead and mulligan maybe this doesn't really do too much I suppose. Still some stuff I want to find. This can play for a lot of points. This is proactive though which I might need. I guess it's also proactive. Blacksmith also proactive. Guess I'll just start with that. So where do we miss out? We miss out on our Morkvog, our Madman, and our Herky and our Grimace. Yeah, we miss out on a few cards, sure. That final say though, it's not great. I mean, he has to play Leader Blitz into Wild Ball this sea, so... He's kind of locked into that. That is something I might want to kill, so I'm going to go ahead and kill it right now. going to boost that once, just to keep it out of damage range, make it hard for him to set up any bloodthirst. Not going to use it a second time. Um, going to spec his blacksmith and just kill it right away. So, okay, plays a decoction on this now, interesting. So I guess you play the totem now then. Somewhat uninteractive points, and what are we going to blood eagle out? I'm still not sure what I want to be. I might be a Madman Lugus, but I'm not entirely certain. Okay, so he plays how the Cripple now onto Greatsword. And I think that might just be my decoction target. I'm not going to use the totem now because I want him to trigger these. And we're going to leave that for now. Don't want to kill this either because if I kill this, it gives him a pretty good leader target on it as well. So I'm not going to go ahead and kill that. I'm going to just ignore it for the time being. Okay, so I think this is where I play my... Held the cripple, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and resurrect maybe the invader. I guess I can also just play this for now and wait. Maybe I want the um the villager instead. 
which it does in theory play for more points. Can't give anything bleeding right now though, because both have veils, so that's why I'm waiting a bit, maybe next time I can do it. I guess I lose one point on my Herald of Crypt by doing it like this, because now I don't get the warrior tag on that, but... Let's see. <clears throat> okay, so plays a second blood eagle. Pulls out his skirtle. Kill this or this, I don't know which one. Okay, it's fine. I guess we just do this now. And I think we take the bleed, honestly. We bleed this because the veil does save from taking damage from it, which is nice. We might go Blood Eagle soonish. Not entirely sure though. Guess we can go Donar as well. It's also probably not too bad. Hmm. We want to spread our Rose out as well to pair on his Hemdal, most likely. Question is, does he have any removal left? Because maybe I'll just take Herkia now. I think I'm just going to take the Herkia now, honestly. Of course, like... Madman. Does 6 damage to that. I'm going to take Herkia though. What's my leader gonna do? Not looking very good actually. <laughs> Not looking particularly great. I think I might take the Two V next onto his Hemdal, probably the best fail I'm probably gonna get, I think. Drake Bondu. Ooh. Interesting. Pretty good value actually, a lot of warriors for him. So I guess I'll do this. Rupture that. Oh, yeah, it's a Grimace, okay. Unfortunately, I don't have our own Grimace, which kind of sucks, but I uh, guess we'll go ahead and do this. Uh, not sure what my leader I guess my leader's going to be on a Turisak Invader. That's not very... Not very good, however, but... I guess it might have to be what it is. So, best value here is, this is worth 7, this is worth 6, let's take and guess this. Fortunately, really bad leader value, but missed some cards. We have a lot of points though, so he's probably going to go lead into Hemdal, and then last card, oh, not Hemdal, sorry, Wild Boar, and then last card, I'm not sure what the last card is going to be, but we'll have to see. So we missed out on our Grimmest, missed out on our Madman Lugos. Morkfog doesn't really matter too much though. I'm assuming his last card is probably going to be something like Morkfog and then 
Need a wild boar. Probably gonna be very close. Yeah, very close. We do end up winning. Okay, nice. That was a close one, but there's a mirror. Um, yeah, he got very good value on his Grimace, and we didn't have our own Grimace, but luckily we still end up winning that one. Okay, let's go again and see what happens. Okay, so, looks like we're gonna be against another mirror. Oh boy. This time we're gonna have blue coins, so it's gonna be a little bit harder, I guess, in that situation. Um, let's see if we find our opening hand, however. Looking for, I guess, Hurricane would be great for this, um, tactical advantage, perhaps. So, I guess I'm not gonna great sword. Probably Mulligan Raider. Hokey is nice. I don't need this anymore then. Find the Morkvog. I'm not sure how much value Morkvog is actually going to be in this mirror, but we'll see. Um, practically speaking, not really much to do. I guess I'm just going to play this for now. And use Tactical Advantage on so you can't stunning blow it. And then... Maybe play this when he, if he gives me a chance to. I mean, he can of course just play stunning blow here anyway and try to be a little bit annoying. We'll see. Looks like he's not going to do that for now. Gonna go ahead and take that stunning blow just to deal with that ASAP before it does get its berserk. Obviously, it gets quite good value at berserk. So, we'll trade our stunning blow to that, which is quite nice. Okay, play zone stunning blow. Okay. I guess I'm gonna force to play this. I lose a little bit of value on it, but whatever. I hope he doesn't have another uninteractive card like a decoction. That could be quite annoying if he has it. Let's see. Okay, looks like he doesn't, but that's also quite annoying for me. Um, that is a little bit annoying for me because my hand is a little bit forced here. Honestly, I might just take the Morph Fog. It's not a very good Morph Fog, but I don't really have any good plays right now. If it wins me round one, I think it's fine. I can always lead her into it if I need it later on. It does take a six point Morph Fog, whatever. Okay, so he gives me bleeding. I can do the same thing to him. Obviously, with this being veiled, it doesn't actually cost me anything, which is nice. This, of course, does Berserk here, which is great. Okay, so we're in round one. We did commit Herkia and Morkfog, but I think that's fine. Getting final say in this mirror is quite valuable. Uh, so what are we looking for? We're looking for our Blood Eagle, and we're looking for our Hell the Cripple, probably. And maybe also Grimus, perhaps, deal with his 2v. Okay, so what do we want to mulligan? I want to put something in our I guess we want to put this in our graveyard, so... I think I'm just going to throw away this, and then probably pass. Play this here again in the graveyard. And then... We shall see. Oh, he plays his... Herc, yeah. Apparently that's his worst card, interesting. So I'll pass on that, and just take the long round three, and... Keep the final say. Um, so, we will be able to get this with our Blood Eagle, which is nice. I guess this is the only card we can't tutor, so finding the totem will be quite valuable. Because it's the only thing I can't actually naturally draw into. With, well, it's the only thing I can't draw into with my Blood Eagle. So, we're mulligan away perhaps this. Blacksmith can be quite nice, actually, but... It also can just die. Yeah, mulligan away. Great sword, great sword is a bit iffy, but we'll see. Okay, so he has his totem. Unfortunately, I did not. We can get this with our blood eagle later on, which is nice. I guess I got nothing really else to do but play this for now. I want to get, I want to get um, a bloodthirst two. Or not Bloodthirst 2, either Bloodthirst 2 or, or Bloodthirst 3, actually. Or I want to get a Death Blow, which could be difficult. How exactly do we go about doing that, however? That is the question. So I'd rather do it sooner rather than later. Force him to play proactively, perhaps. Not a very good decoction, but force him to play proactively because right now I don't really have good plays. Okay, use his totem. Don't think he should have, but. Oh, that's very good. That means my. 
I think we get some very good value on that. Okay, gonna go ahead and play TV on that now. Hammond. I think I might just do this. Sub a death blow for my blood eagle to tutor out my health equip. I'm losing too much value by not playing this. That is quite nice. Get to kill that greatsword nice and easily. Um, so what am I doing with leader right now? It might be Morkvog, it might be Herky, I'm not sure yet. Play our greatsword for now. He might kill it with a decoction. Kind of feels like, yeah. Feels like he has a decoction in hand. I guess then we probably play leaderability for her here, it seems. Purify this. That is your brilliant move. Truly? I think I'm gonna take a probably should have done this a while ago, but better late than never, I guess. And the more blood thirst we get, the better our Madman Lugos becomes. You can get some pretty good Madman Lugos value potentially here. Yeah. We're gonna lead into a great sword, interesting. Got more fog now. Okay, let's go win that one. Um, yeah, that's pretty easy win, and we could have got really good madman. I was quite curious how much madman Lugos value we've gotten. We should have, we probably would have gotten quite a bit, but yeah. Anyway, let's do one more game. Hopefully, we don't queue into Murrow and Let's see how we do. Okay, let's see what we're up against. Oh, surprise, surprise, Murrow. Like I said, it looks like everyone is playing this type of deck right now, so. Get ready for quite a few mirrors. Let's see how we do. We do have blue coin again, so that could be a little bit tricky, but should be manageable, especially we've got Blood Eagle on opening hand. Don't need the Mork Fog. I mean, the Great Sword on one. Probably, so I guess we'll get rid of that. And I think I might get rid of this. And perhaps this too. So I would like Herc here, but for now, I guess I'm just going to start with this. Probably going to end up dying to a Stunning Blow. But if he does that, I guess we'll play the Berserker after that. If it doesn't die, I'm pretty happy because it just ends up dying, as expected. I guess I don't play the Berserker then, don't really have much else to do in terms of proactivity. I could play Totem, but it feels a little bit premature. The reason I want to go Herc here is because it does get me a good tactical advantage target that he can't TGV. If I had Grimace in hand, maybe I would have TA'd that um, Blacksmith, but got to play around his TGV. Okay, so I'm just going to toot this out of my deck. Gonna attack the Vanch and this will die, which is nice. So these two pings will kill that. And then I can of course give this bleeding, which is okay. Force me to play proactively again, which I can't exactly do, which is very annoying. I guess I'm just going to have to do this. Let's play as a four. Could also play Totems. Winning round one worth playing Totem here. Maybe. This will Berserk now. Okay, 
So he drew quite a punishing hand. He had double stunning blow in his opening hand when he had red coin, which is obviously very good for them. Takes that now, interesting. Um, I guess then I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Give that bleeding, transform the totem, and then I should probably be able to win on one, I think, at this point. I guess he gets a lot of reach with Hemdal, probably. Okay, so we win on one. We trade totem for this. I guess we'll play Herkia, but getting final say in the mirror is very, very valuable, so... We'll take round one and then get ready for round three. Let's see if we can find our cards. Looking for our Harold the Cripple or our Hemdal. I think those are the, probably the two best. Obviously, top deck back into this because it is a okay. We have eight cards and we can drop we can drop something into the graveyard. I guess. Kind of want to get this in the graveyard. I think. Okay, we got the Hemdal, which is great. Um. Let's drop this, get in the graveyard for potentially Herald the Cripple if you want it. Don't know why it's not showing the Veil stats. It does a Veil, but gets a little bit of a visual bug. Okay, so he does the same thing. Pass here, get ready for round 3. And let's see what he runs in his deck. Um, okay. Ah, there's the Veil status. A little bit of a visual bug, it seems. Um, okay, so let's see. What are our top decks going to show us? Oh, I guess my camera is in the wrong spot before everyone reads me. So, Mulligan away the invader, I think. Ah, this is actually not that great. Can Mulligan away this, I think. Blacksmith is probably better than this. Yeah. Decoction. Okay, so what do miss out on? We miss out on our Harold the Cripple and our Morkfog and our Grimace. Grimace would have been pretty good, actually. But, sure. Okay, so it opens up a totem. I think I'm going to go ahead and play this then. And then, hmm, what do we do after this? Probably kills, I mean he's already played both stunning blows, he has to have, has to have exactly decoction to kill it. I need to get blood those two ASAP so I can play my um, blood eagle and tutor out my Harold the Cripple. So as soon as I get blood those two I need to take it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So it ends up killing that. Sure. Guess it played the Berserker. Hopefully, you ping that. So it sets up my Bloodthirst. Not quite. So. I need to get blood this too as soon as humanly possible. I guess I'm going to definitely stun him by this. Please ping that if you don't mind. No. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> That's not good for me. I guess we get blood this too set up, which is nice for now. Also, this is somewhat uninteractive for him as too, which is kind of nice. Um, okay, so he plays Herkia. Hmm. I take some of my blood dust. So I guess I play this. Set up my blood dust for my Herald the Cripple. It's gonna come down a little bit later than I wanted it, but... Under these circumstances, I guess it's going to have to be like that. I'm going to take this, actually. The nice thing about this is Pierce's armor. 
which is quite nice. So we want to get our Bloodthirst set up for our Madman Lugos and whatnot. So take this now. I'm not sure I'm going to do with the decoction yet. We'll have to see. My leaderability might best be used on Hoki. I'm not sure. Okay, use on that. Like right now, I don't have a leader, so I'm gonna, actually I'm just going to take it on Hoki now. Should have done this a couple of turns ago. Okay. And I've got quite a bit of blood this, so Madman Lugos does decent amount of damage right now, which is great. Okay, so he plays his greatsword. He's gonna use leader on this immediately to kill my Herky, I guess. Okay. I guess we may as well see if he has... Yeah, I guess that's not true exactly. I guess I could just kill a decoction for now. Kill that. And then... I'm not sure what the sequencing is going to be. We have Veteran... Tursach... Okay, veteran Tursach. Um... TV, I guess he plays that. Might end up being my Morkvog target. Not my Morkvog, my Madman Lugos target. I guess I should just take it now to take the Madman Lugos value. Let's go ahead and kill that entirely, which is great. Eleven point Madman Lugos, pretty good. Not bad for an eight point card, a like provision card rather. Okay, so he goes Morkvark here, yeah, not the most amazing Morkvark. I have to go TV right now. Oh, come on, why are you ping that? His last card might be a Grimace to purify this, or it might be a TV or his own. Okay, it's gonna be a Grimace, which we should be able to pretty easily beat. Yep. So another mirror. Um, yeah, that's the deck. It's like I said, there's a lot of mirrors on the ladder right now. It seems like everyone is playing this deck, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, like I said, this deck is very strong. I do expect to get a hotfix at some point. Um, it seems like it's probably the strongest deck right now, and I would be very surprised if it was if it stays the same um, for very long. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys again next time. If you guys got any questions regarding this deck, feel free to ask in the description below. And yeah, take care. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.